Hello, welcome to the first of three short What's New with the APA style videos uh, to talk about the changes from the 6th edition to the 7th edition. So this first one we're going to talk a little bit about changes that relate to language and bias in writing. So first let's talk about some general changes. Um, the manual in the 7th edition has even more examples and detailed guidance than it did previously. A lot of that is because there's greater acknowledgement that APA style is common in a variety of disciplines that are not psychology. For example, business and nursing. So if you look in the manual, you will see more examples of things about how it's important to capitalize executives and things of that nature for business writing. There's also, and this is the main point, uh, a very strong and increased emphasis on biased language and avoiding biased language in writing. So that takes a couple of forms. The most important one is that there's a whole fifth chapter of the style manual now, which focuses exclusively on this topic that is new. And in large part, the framing of much of this discussion is around the idea of person-centered language. So you're writing to, in a way, center on the person rather than a condition or aspect of that person. So you are advised to, for example, say a person with paraplegia, not a paraplegic. So in other words, that tends to mean that we are using more adjectival descriptor sorts of phrases for people. The other way that this plays out is you are strongly advised to use the labels that communities use for themselves, uh, and we'll come back to that in a minute. So the another takeaway is that uh, there's a large section in this chapter on intersectionality and the complex web of different identities that we have. Uh, we're not going to go into that, but just know that it's there, and if you're looking for more guidance, it's part of the style now. There is also lots of specific guidance for many different populations that was not there in previous editions. One of those that I think is useful to highlight is the idea of socioeconomic status. And a second is uh, gender and sexuality. And we're going to highlight that just a little bit in our kind of, you know, one example we talk about. So. One way that this plays out with regard to gender and sexuality, and it's also just a writing style difference generally, uh, is that singular they is now preferred. Uh, rather than talking about he or she, you say they, or otherwise in some way use gender neutral language. Um, another example of that is the idea that one would say straight as opposed to heterosexual. Now why is that? Well. One reason is that, as was on the last slide, we're looking to replicate languages communities use about themselves. And people don't often walk around saying, I'm a heterosexual. They say, I'm a straight person. So that's one reason. But also, there's a big concern in avoiding stigmatizing language and avoiding false dualities or hierarchies that don't really exist. So um, one reason not to say heterosexual and homosexual, and instead say straight and gay, is that in addition to the idea that it, that's what people really say about themselves, you are also, by doing so, not creating this false dynamic where there are no other kinds of people, like bisexual or asexual people. So that's kind of just one example of how this avoiding bias language plays out. If you're more curious about how to use gender neutral writing, here's a quick screen grab that'll stay up. And it sort of ends this first video that sort of shows multiple examples of how you can either work around using gendered words uh, by changing pronouns or by changing the structures of your sentences. And that concludes the first of these short videos.